In 2026, next year, we're going to see the launch of the most powerful, most efficient hybrids in the world. They're going to be green. We'll also see the launch of the first Hyper EVs, which will generate about 40% of their total energy from regeneration using a separate motor on the front wheels. And they're going to have no rear brakes at all. The regen will do all of the braking. They're going to take 600 kilowatt chargers, giving a 10% boost in an amazing 30 seconds. Or in other words, they can completely fill a 52 kilowatt hour battery pack, same size as say a Renault Zoe or a Tesla Model 3, in just six minutes. I'm Dave, this is Dave Takes It On. 600 kilowatt charging was the subject of a recent video, with Ionity stating they'll be installing these massively powerful chargers throughout Europe starting this year. Well, that seems a million miles away from the early electric highway chargers, which were at first just fast 7 kilowatts, before the arrival a few years later of the 50 kilowatt DC chargers from ABB. Much of this advancement is entirely thanks to Formula One and, more recently, Formula E with their 100% BEV racing cars that could take over from hybrids within the next 10 years. Yeah, F1 has been very much at the forefront of the EV development tornado. F1 is claimed to be the pinnacle of motorsport and it is where many of the features that we take for granted in modern cars come from. Cannot claim to have invented the modern hybrid, that was Toyota with the Prius. That was the first mass-produced hybrid anyhow. And that was 20 years earlier. But they've developed the modern hybrid to unbelievable heights and the best is yet to come. 2026 will see the most advanced hybrid ever developed and that will feed down into your family car in no time at all. You can thank Formula One for the active suspension that gives you a much smoother ride and the flappy paddles on the back of your steering wheel for your gears, plus safety leading to drivers walking away unaided from 200 mile an hour crashes. Add in aerodynamics, advanced electronics, carbon brakes, power steering, and we have a lot to thank Formula One for. But they're only just getting started because for them, their advances are now limited by that petrol engine, which, by the way, will use synthetic clean fuels for the next few years. By 2030, they predict that the new Formula E racing cars will be much faster, much safer, and totally capable of running a full F1 race distance, around about 190 miles, at incredible speeds. A massive improvement to back when they couldn't even do a shortened street race distance. That's going to raise an interesting question. Will Formula One be true to itself if it continues old, using old-fashioned ICE engines that are slower, when the latest electric Formula E cars will be so much faster and cleaner? Well, it seems to be the fans that demand this. They want the roar of the V12s or V10s and the smell of exhaust fumes. Oh, but they're a dying breed, the diehards who will hold out until the bitter end. I was reminded of this just today on a short trip where a, I think it was a Subaru Impreza that had been heavily modified could be heard approaching on the motorway from a good few hundred yards away and was pretty deafening when he put his foot down alongside me and the full roar of the engine was released. Maybe I'm just showing my age. I just thought, you wait, you'll be half deaf by the time you trade that in for a family saloon and settle down. Well, the level at which damage to hearing is done is as low as 85 decibels. A rock concert might hit 100 decibels. Formula One in the old V12 or V10 days reached a peak of over 140 decibels. Well, at this level, the damage being done is permanent. Well, not for the drivers, they wear noise-cancelling noise earplugs. Now, the permanent damage is for the crowds. And, of course, these diehards with the blown exhausts on streetcars. How can anyone enjoy that roar for a journey of even 20 minutes? Yeah, stopped at the lights, it might get a few heads turning if you rev the throttle. But for a whole journey... Even a mere 75 decibels, as produced by a typical vacuum cleaner, can produce permanent hearing loss if it continues long enough. Huh. That puts my hoovering days in the past.
Do we really want to have our sport guided by people who are already half deaf, demanding the engines be turned up because they can't hear them as well as they used to? <laughs> but F1 has its limits, and one of those is the petrol engine bit of the hybrid. You can only get so much energy out of one of them. They still produce energy by burning a fuel, which produces heat, which is then used to expand the air to force down a piston in a cylinder. They still need huge radiators to get rid of the excess heat. That is your efficiency gone blowing in the wind. In addition, you have turbo lag, which is a time it takes for the engine to respond to your demand for more power when you press the accelerator pedal. It's not instant. Any normal driver knows this, but an electric motor can and does produce almost 100% power from stationary. This is why most petrol car drivers who test drive an electric car always comment on the instant response they get. EVs are not only faster cars, but they feel even faster. Well, that takes us on to Formula E. Remember that? In the early days, the batteries were so poor that they could not even cover a shortened race distance. To get round that, they devised the two-car solution. They would drive half of a shortened course then pull into the pits. They'd have to hop out, get in another car which was waiting for them with a full battery, get strapped in and then continue the race. Now many people complained about that, claiming it was, it was not a good look and it would put people off, not only watching Formula E races, but put people off EVs altogether. It merely showed up the EV problems. But that didn't last very long. Before the sport agreed, and it all came to an end. But that also coincided with the next-gen cars, the Gen 2. Power increased by over a third, and the battery power density also doubled, but the weight stayed the same. Now they could actually complete a full race on the shortened course, and speeds increased to around 175 mile an hour. That's still short of Formula 1's outright record of 231.4 mile an hour set by Valtteri Bottas in the rarefied air of the Brazilian circuit up at 800 metres in height. But just as today, even an average cheap EV now has a much better acceleration than its petrol predecessor, so too will the Formula, Formula E become much faster than today's F1 cars. Even the new 2026 rules and the huge advances they bring, like cars being 30 kilograms lighter, drag reduced by 55%, tripling of the electric power available from 120 to 350 kilowatts, giving a near 50-50 split between petrol and electric power. And top speed is going to be lifted to over 200 miles an hour. Still, they're going to be held back by the ice, internal combustion engine. And as long as the engine is in the car, it will ultimately prove to be slower than going all electric. For proof of that, you need look no further than the McMurtry Spearling, as it was designed to be all electric and have all the additional features that F1 or any motorsport rules prevented. But it beat the Top Gear lap record when driven by the Stig by more than four seconds, and that record was set by a full-blown V12 Formula One car 24 years previously. It also reduced both the power limit and the downforce to 75% and went and beat the Hockenheim track record by four seconds and beat the fastest ever production car, that's the Mercedes AMG 1, by 14 seconds. It can also do 0 to 60 in 1.4 seconds. Electric is the future of ultimate motor racing and F1 is the ultimate in motor racing. The opening description of this video is of the very latest Gen 3 Formula E to race this year, leading one team boss to complain that F1 will have a tricky choice to make very soon. Go electric or become a specialised niche purely for the diehards, just like historic racing. He envisaged that, happening, uh, that could happen in less than 10 years. Technology could make that even sooner. But finally, back to the 600 kilowatt charging. The powers that be in Formula E want to spice up the sport even more, just like Formula One. They recently forced two pit stops at Monaco and asked P Pirelli to produce brand new super sticky tyres, but ones that only lasted a few, literally a few laps. In a bid to spice it up, 
So Formula E is doing its bit. They want to introduce an additional compulsory pit stop of 34 seconds duration, during which the car will be plugged in for 30 seconds and will take on board a 10% battery boost, supplied at 600 kilowatts. That's way beyond the limit of any EV on the road today, but it shows where we're heading with Ionity installing these 600 kilowatt chargers starting this year. And as I found out at the Everything Electric show recently, That'll be through a CCS2 socket. Do you fancy a six minute top up from 0% to 100% while you sit back and then have to rush through your double skinny almond latte? Who said the EV is dying a slow death? Believe me, it is only just getting warmed up. I'm Dave. And thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe, click the notification bell. Massive thank you to all our members, both Patreon and YouTube. And if you want to find details about that, you'll find them down below in the description. You get a preview of uh, the latest videos before anyone else. You see videos that we don't launch on YouTube. And we'll also put in there some behind the scenes shots when we're out filming and some bloopers. I don't always get it right first time. Uh, if you think that's worth doing, a uh, couple of pound a month, uh, it's very, very much appreciated. So a massive thank you to all our existing members for your continued support and a big welcome to all the new members. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave.